If I asked you who in the history of the world has the most things named after them, who would you say? Maybe Christopher Columbus, Julius Caesar, Jesus? All fair answers, but all wrong answers. I'm willing to bet that this person is someone you've probably heard of, but know next to nothing about. I definitely didn't download this world history textbook from Library Genesis to prove that his name got no mentions compared to other famous people. This person's life was so historically impactful that his work has become more than just notable. His mark on the world has become embedded into our lives, so second nature, so ingrained, and right under our noses that we have all collectively forgotten about him. This is the story of Alexander von Humboldt. Humboldt was a Prussian polymath, born in 1769 in Berlin. He was a scientific powerhouse, an explorer and a visionary whose groundbreaking insights laid the foundation for ecology, environmental science, and even the concept of a unified universe. Despite his monumental contributions, Humboldt's name rarely sparks recognition with the same awareness as some of his contemporaries like Charles Darwin, Thomas Edison, and Alfred Nobel. To unravel Humboldt's paradox, you have to understand his life and work, examining both the complete novelty of his achievements and the shadows that obscured him from historical memory. Humboldt's scientific odyssey began early, fueled by an insatiable curiosity that propelled him towards diverse disciplines, botany, geology, zoology, astronomy, and everything in between. His most defining adventure was a five-year exploration of Latin America, a trek that dwarfed any scientific expedition of its time and scope and rigor. Armed with notebooks, botanical presses, and an arsenal of scientific instruments, Humboldt meticulously documented the continent's rich tapestry of life, revealing the intricate web of relationships between organisms and their environment. His magnum opus, the many-volumed personal narrative of travels to the equinoctial regions of the new continent, became a scientific goldmine, offering not just factual observations, but a ground groundbreaking vision of nature as a unified, interconnected system. In the fashion of the biggest names in Romanticism, like Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson, he combined scientific fact with a subjective observation. This holistic approach makes Humboldt the father of ecology. He recognized the delicate dance between living organisms, their physical surroundings, and the invisible forces that shape them. He studied how temperature and altitude modulated plant distribution, how electrical currents affected living organisms, and how human actions could irrevocably alter the balance of ecosystems. This awareness, now central to environmental science, was revolutionary in its time and continues to serve as a guiding light to our present struggle against climate change and ecological degradation. Yet that very central idea led to his obscurity. Let me explain. Several factors might explain Humboldt's underappreciation. I've narrowed them down to three broad topics. One argument is that the sheer breadth of his interests made him a victim of his own intellectual diversity. His mastery spanned numerous disciplines, making it difficult to categorize him with a single scientific niche. In an era of scientific specialization, Humboldt's holistic approach, while unifying in nature, might have seemed fragmented and unorthodox to some within specific scientific communities. A second reason might be that Humboldt's work predated the rise of modern scientific communication. His groundbreaking ideas, disseminated through lengthy travelogues and dense treatises, lacked the rapid-fire diffusion of knowledge facilitated by today's technology. This limited their reach, allowing more specialized contemporaries to garner wider recognition, even if their contributions were arguably less revolutionary. A third contributor to Humboldt's relative obscurity might be the Eurocentric bias in scientific historiography. His primary contributions focused on South America, a region often marginalized in the Western narrative of scientific progress. This geographical disconnect might have further diminished his prominence in the eyes of European academia. Not to mention, the interstate warring in Europe during his life often pulled resources and attention away from his work. Yet, Humboldt's influence on the course of science is undeniable. His work profoundly impacted Charles Darwin, John Muir, Ernst Haeckel, and other scientific and natural luminaries. His emphasis on the interconnectedness of nature laid the foundation for the development of ecology. He meticulously documented observations challenged existing theories and paved the way for new avenues of scientific inquiry. Alexander von Humboldt's life and work stands as a testament to how thinking outside the box in science can often lead to revolutionary ideas. He redefined the very way we understand nature, not as a collection of disparate parts, but as a vibrant, interconnected whole. While his work may not have the same familiarity as his contemporaries, his legacy as a revolutionary thinker and a pioneer of environmental understanding does, just in seemingly unseen ways. His name is sprinkled on places around the world. It seems like time his work is recognized too. A lot of this video was based on the book The Invention of Nature, Alexander von Humboldt's New World by Andrea Wolf, in addition to several other sources. It's a great look into Humboldt's life and does a much better job than I did in describing the revolutionary nature of his work. I highly recommend it if you are interested in the topic.